on this video, we're going to look at rotating our uh, region around the line x equals three. So let us, let's draw this on our picture. Now x equals three is actually a little bit off of our graph, but it's basically over here. x equals three, we're rotating this direction. So this is where we're rotating. And so that's going to change the way that we set up our problems. Now, again, keep in mind that we have a function that is defined in terms of x and the line x equals three is parallel to the y-axis. So that means function of x, y-axis, we're gonna use the shell method as the best method. That's the one we're gonna do first. And then we will do the washer method um, to verify our results. Now, the uh, height and the radius are what we have to figure out here. Now, the height of the function is going to still be this distance here. Um, in the x direction, it's still going to be the height of our cylinders. Remember, we're rotating around this way. The height of our cylinders is still going to be this region. That's h. So that portion actually hasn't changed from when we rotated this around the y-axis. But what is going to change is the radius. The radius is here. The radius is here. Now, if we were rotating around a line that was over here, we could actually use basically the same formulation that we did in the previous one. We would take our radius and we would subtract the axis of rotation, and that would actually give us the correct distance uh, because subtracting a negative value would give us a plus value. And if the radius was being measured in this direction, then it would be the x distance plus however far it was to the axis of rotation in this direction. But we're actually oriented in the other direction. And so we actually have to subtract in the other order because if I'm valuing a point, like say I'm doing the, the radius right here, then x is one, but my distance to the axis of rotation is two and that's a positive value. So it's actually three minus X instead of X minus three. Now, as I previously noted, if you do the subtraction in the wrong order, if you do X minus three in your problem, you will get this correct magnitude of the solution. You will just get a negative number. So it's not catastrophic if you subtract X minus three instead of three minus X. But if you want a positive answer, the radius is X minus three. Now, let's set up our problem. Again, remember that for the shell method, we have the radius and the height. So again, our height is the function minus the top function minus the bottom function. That's 3x plus 1 minus 1, which reduces to 3x. And then the radius in this case is not x anymore. It's now 3 minus x. And then we have some algebra we have to do. Um, simplify this expression, FOIL, we get this. And then when we integrate 9 halves x squared from 9x, 3x squared becomes x cubed. We plug in our 0 and 2, which were our limits in x, 0 and 2. And we get 18 minus 8, which is 10 times 2 pi is 20 pi. Now, if we want to do this by the washer method, then we have to think about, again, this sideways orientation. We're thinking about y is a function of x, or x is a function of y. We have to change the orientation because the washer method, this line, x equals 3, is parallel to the y-axis. To rotate around the y-axis, you need functions of y with the washer method. And so 
we have to do our initial algebra to solve for x in terms of y. And then we need to think about our radii, our inner and outer radii. So let us think about that. Let's change colors. Now, if we think about our inner and outer radii, the inner radius is this distance. So that's R1, R i. It's the inner radius. And then the outer radius is going to be here. Because that's the furthest distance from the function. So if we think about our outer radius, again, we have to think about this kind of rotating it 90 degrees to the left. The top function is the rightmost function. So the we have to think about this distance here as being three, which is the topmost function, minus the um, the bottom of that distance, which is the line. So this would be three minus our equation, one third y minus one, which is this line solved for x. And then the inner radius uh, is going to be three minus two. So it seems like it's a little backwards from what we did before, and it is because we've changed the orientation. Again, if we had the line over here, that it would be more similar to the example that we did um, previously with the, the line y equals one. But because it's on the other side of the equation, everything is flipped around. The greatest distance is not to the rightmost function, it's to the leftmost function because we're, our axis of rotation is on is further to the right. All right, so let's look at what that does for us. So in our setup, this is our axis of rotation minus the function. Now, again, this is one of those cases where the order of subtraction actually ends up not mattering because when you square this, it's all gonna go away anyway. You're gonna get the same value. So the thing is, um, you can think of this as the function minus the axis of rotation, just as sort of a mechanical procedure, you'll be fine. but Technically, it is in this case because of the orientation three minus the function, which is what I've set up here. And then again, same thing for this one. Um, again, you can do this as function minus the um, axis of rotation. And then when you take get a negative one and you square it, you'll get up one again. So it's not going to matter. But um, again, technically, the distance is the rightmost function minus the boundary, which is further to the left. Square it. And then we have a bunch of simplifying that we have to do. Um, when you do this simplifying three plus a third, because we had to distribute this minus sign, we end up with 10 thirds and minus y. And then we have to square it. Now this one, three minus two became one. And when you square it, you just get one. When you foil this, again, keep in mind, you're foiling it and you can't pull out the one third um, because it doesn't apply to this term. And when you square the one third, you're gonna get one ninth, it's gonna be messy. So I just left it in. And so I'm foiling, it's a perfect square, so. 10 over three times 10 over three is 100 over nine. 10 over three times one over three is 10 over nine, but then there's two of them. And then one third times one third is one ninth. And then minus one, and I combine the one and the 10 over 100 over nine to get 91 over nine. And then I integrated, I got my y, 20 over nine divided by another two gives me 10 over nine y squared. One over nine divided by another three gives me one over 27 y cubed. Plug in my limits. Now, one of the, the disconcerting things about doing this is like even when I'm working on it and I've been doing this for a long time, 
I'm looking at like 637 over nine. Oh my God, I must have made a mistake. This is not going to work out. But uh, 91 times seven over nine. The y squared, seven squared is 49 times 10 is 490 over nine. Uh, seven cubed is 343 over 27. Plug in the one, switch the sign because you're subtracting. Plug in the one, switch the sign because you're subtracting, et cetera. And then when you actually throw this into the calculator to simplify, or you know, if you want to do it by hand, find a common denominator, um, you end up with 20, with 20 pi. And that is exactly the same answer that we got before. And again, sort of the point of doing this uh, is not only to sort of get comfortable with the methods, but to sort of make it super clear, there are really good benefits <laughs> to, to identifying the correct method to use given the way you're rotating and the way that you're your, your functions are originally provided to you. Um, because if your function is given to you in terms of y and you're trying to rotate it around the line x equals three, then you really should be using the washer method. Um, that's the point because you don't have to do the algebra, everything is, so, so it, the, that's the idea here. Here we have function of x rotating around a line parallel to the y axis. The shell method is much easier and it gets you to the answer much more quickly. When you do the washer method, yes, you can do it. But it's not necessarily going to give you the same answer. Uh, I mean, it is going to give you the same answer, but you're going to work a lot harder to get that answer. So again, there's a strategy involved here. Uh, and you will save yourself a lot of grief like wondering about your sanity when you see fractions like this, uh, even though it all does in fact work out. <laughs>